Now, it's exactly two months until America decides who will end up in the White House in one of the most bizarre races ever. To talk about all that, I am joined now by Democratic strategist Joel Rubin and Jennifer Ewing of the Republican Overseas, making a return to Never Mind the Ballots. Thank you both. Joel, I'm going to come to you first. Um, you know, looking at this from, from Britain, the very same people in your party that were telling us not very long ago there's nothing wrong with Joe Biden, he's great, he's going to beat Trump, uh, are now telling us uh, Kamala Harris is the greatest thing since sliced bread and everyone should just, you know, get on board. It's a bit much, isn't it? No, not at all. Look, Kamala Harris is a fantastic vice president. Uh, Joe Biden decided he didn't want to run any longer. <laughs> and uh, it's funny because the final, the, the race, uh, e even since when he left, it'll be a longer time period to run for president than typically uh, one runs for prime minister in Britain. So uh, no problem there. Uh, Europe knows Kamala Harris well. I think that she'll be she'll be uh, quite a, a positive addition to transatlantic cooperation. Isn't the tricky thing for Harris though is that she's essentially got to run against her own administration. She's saying that she's going to fix everything, but <laughs> she's had four years to fix it. Or was she was she sort of put in an attic somewhere in the White House and kept out the way? Well, it's a great question. Look, I mean, she's running against Donald Trump, and she's running against the whole anti. Uh, anti-American isolationist attitude of Donald Trump, where he uh, believes in attacking women uh, for their own personal choices and taking away our freedoms. And so that's what she's running against. And her administration, along with Joe Biden, uh, that's been trying to repair that and battle that. And that's what she's going to continue to fight for. One thing is, is pretty clear from, uh, from where I'm sitting is that uh, she has received a remarkable lack of scrutiny so far. I know we've got the debate next week. We'll talk about that in a moment. But she mm -hmm. does seem to be doing her, uh, her utmost to avoid proper sit-down interviews, proper scrutiny, um, the normal sort of bread and butter of a, of, a, of a presidential campaign. When you're trying to get voters to get to know you, she seems to want to do very stage-managed little scripted pieces, right? I, I don't know. I, she did an interview last week. She's been yeah, vice she president for three and a half years. That's a, that's a lot of scrutiny. I, I mean, look, if you look at Donald Trump, he's kind of sitting in the golf course at Mar-a-Lago most of the time, not doing events like she is. She's getting uh, massive uh, crowds at her events. Uh, she's doing the debate next week. She's wanted more debates. She, she, unlike Donald Trump, she wants the microphone to be on during the debate so that Americans <laughs> can hear her and him in the flesh. Uh, he's afraid of that, or his team is at least afraid of him being his true self. So uh, I'm not so worried about her scrutiny. Uh, there's a lot out there uh, the last three and a half plus years of, in, of interviewing her, talking to her and I'm, checking her out. I'm pretty sure Hillary Clinton would have quite liked Donald Trump's microphone to be muted a few times in 2016. But uh, <laughs> Jennifer, your, uh, your candidate, I know I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to get into trouble for saying this, but he has been totally off kilter since the outrageous assassination attempt on him. But there's something wrong with Donald, isn't it? He's missing some of that... Some of that spark to use something of an understatement. I, I don't I don't know. I don't necessarily agree. I mean, and while I've never had an attempted assassination on myself, I can't imagine what he's going through. But no, he's been out there every day interviewing people and in, being interviewed by people in long form. The thing about Donald Trump and J.D. Vance is they will talk to anyone, whether it's a Gen Z podcaster, whether it was a couple of days ago, Lex Fridman, that was 90 minutes. So those um, podcasts and those long form interviews go out to the independent voters, which, as we all know, that's what the election is going to come down to are the independent, undecided voters in the seven swing states. Um, with regards to uh, Kamala Harris, I mean, I guess we'd first have to, I would take issue with the fact that Joe Biden decided to step <laughs> down. I think we all know that there was a cabal of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Barack Obama, who over that one fateful weekend pushed him over the cliff and uh, it was not his decision. And and then they anointed or uh, coronated Kamala Harris. And uh, you're right, she's not been doing a lot of interviews. And I think next week on the 10th, when we have the first debate, she's going to very much regret that because we all know practice makes perfect and it's a very different um i mean i don't need to tell you guys we're on live tv right now so um it's a very different skill set to 
answer questions and have a conversation on live TV versus looking at a teleprompter at what's basically a pep rally. So <laughs> I think the election in the end, it's going to come down to the two biggest issues, which are inflation economy. And then the second one is the crisis we have at the southern border. If Trump stays on message and stays disciplined and he can directly tie Kamala Harris to both of those issues. She was the tie breaking vote in the um, so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which did anything Thing but um, solve inflation. And then number two, whether you want to call her the borders are or not, um, she was the vice president and the border has been an absolute disaster since those guys got into office because they put a line through all the I Trump's take policy. issue with those being the top issues in the campaign. Those are, are the top you, Republican issues, issues in the campaign. Are. What are your top issues? I mean, those are the top Republican issues in the campaign, without okay. a doubt. And, and certainly the economy is the major issue. Uh, okay. uh, freedom, <laughs> uh, uh, women's right, right to, to make decisions about her own bodies. Uh, the climate mm -hmm. uh, crisis is a major issue. Not we have a 10. tremendous I'm amount of interest amongst Gen Z. That, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, not accurate. And, and if we look at the polls, uh, really what we're looking at right now is a narrowing of the gap, even on the economy, because as people begin to learn about Donald Trump's plans to enrich the billionaires and take money away from working Americans, they uh, aren't liking it. And so I think we're going to see the debate on Tuesday night, quite a contrast. I'm not so worried about Kamala Harris. She's not been hiding in the cave for the last three and a half years. She's been the vice president of the United States. So she'll be able <laughs> to communicate quite Not the most popular vice president of the United States. But Jennifer, just quickly, it is clear from the polls uh, that... Be it, better off than, than what we saw with Mike Pence in the way he ended in his term with Donald Trump trying to get him killed. Jennifer, the uh, a disputed... Donald Trump would dispute that characterization, I'm sure, but I don't think he's going to sue us. I hope he is watching, though. Um, Jennifer, just on that, though, the polls clearly have narrowed. The, the, the removal, um, the disputed... Uh, uh, voluntary removal of, uh, of, of Joe Biden. It, it has enlivened this race. It has made it more competitive. You know, Donald Trump hasn't seemed to be able to sort of nail down a very clear, distinctive attack line on, on, on Harris. He used to be very good at these. We had Sleepy Joe. We had Joe de Sanctum, Joe Sanctimonious, you know, Rick Sanctimonious. You know, where's his kind of comrade Kamala thing? It's kind of not really landing, is it? He's floundering a bit, isn't he, with this, with this new candidate? Um, I don't know if he's floundering. And actually, the, the fact that anybody would call for more name calling is beyond me. One's <laughs> well, I'm a tabloid journalist. It kind of it, helps us yeah, when we're okay, writing. Okay, tabloid journalist. That's, it's, it's that's his little, that's his trick, unfortunately. But um, no, in all seriousness, I mean, you're right. There, there was a relief rally after uh, Biden um, was removed from office. But if you look at even in the last couple of days, that has come to, I think, I think we've reached peak Kamala. So in the last couple of days, there's a little more data, which still both of these candidates are neck and neck in all the swing states. But there is no way that the lead for Kamala is as far ahead as people would like to believe. And just like in the 2020 primary election, the more the American people hear and see from Kamala Harris, the less they like her, whether it's her policies, her personality. But that's not in the data. Uh, we just had a CNN poll well, it was in yesterday where Kamala is winning. Kamala is, but, but yet we just had a CNN poll come out yesterday where Kamala is winning in the swing states, uh, uh, two to one, and then three are toss-ups. And when we look at democratic enthusiasm, this is really important. I'm glad we're talking about this. Uh, the way to win elections is by getting people out to vote. It's not by saying we have a higher number in the polls. And what we're looking at right now is record enthusiasm amongst Democrats is at 2008 levels that we haven't seen since Barack Obama first ran. And that is how you win. You get your voters out. And this is going to be a, a turnout election. This is going to be an election where every single Democratic vote and every single Republican vote needs to get out for their candidate uh, and I think Democrats, our enthusiasm is off the charts. And then, of course, the independent states like Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Kamala's up by five points in Michigan, as well as in Wisconsin. She's up by a few points, according to CNN yesterday. That's an extreme reversal from six weeks ago. Polls are tight, though. Polls are, you know, margins of errors. And as we found out in our British election this year, polls can also be wildly out. Just before we go, Tuesday night, it's going to be, you know, we're all going to love it. We're going to be watching every sort of cough and spit every moment, every interruption, every row, will it make a massive amount of difference? Same question to each of you. Will it make a massive amount of difference? And what is the question that your candidate probably fears the most and could change the whole dynamic of the race if it can? Joe? 
Oh, I think that this is going to be one of those debates where we really do see an impact from it. Uh, it's it's rare. A lot of times it's easy to dismiss the value of debates, but we should not dismiss the value of that June 27th debate. It clearly uh, had an impact on the race. And I think we're going to see a similar kind of dynamic where out of this debate, the first time that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump even meet, they're going to be talking about their vision for the future. And that's going to really sharpen the minds because Americans are voting. Later next week, they're starting to vote already uh, in, in uh, uh, absentee ballots and whatnot. Uh, and so the big question, the question for Kamala Harris that I think she's going to have to answer is, why is she running right now? And what is her yep. vision for the United States? And make it very concrete. She did this at the convention, but this is her first real opportunity to explain that in a succinct, clear way to the American people in live real-time TV uh, without a teleprompter with her just saying it extemporaneously what she plans to do for the country. Jennifer, make or break moment for the Donald. Um, yeah, and look, we're excited. I mean, last night there was supposed to be a debate on Fox, which Kamala didn't agree to. So you'll know that Donald sat down with Sean Hannity and did basically a town hall because Kamala didn't want to do it. So I think... Uh, well, that, that's uh, not accurate. There was never an agreement to have that debate. I'm sorry, I'm not. Okay, well, um, but we had there the was I think the offer was there, though. To, to I think up the offer was. No, that, that, that was the never, offer. never part of the mix. <laughs> okay, well, um, both of the debates that uh, Donald Trump has done have been on Democrat terms, which is CNN was the first one, ABC is the next one. They wanted all sorts of things. Um, so Donald Trump has said, sure, whatever, even if it doesn't work in my favor, I'll do that. Kamala Harris and the Democrats have clearly not done that. And uh, I think we know the reason not because the more people see of her, the well, well, please. Joe, you're shaking, please you're shaking your head me. there. Please enlighten I mean, me. It's to just, the that's just factually inaccurate. So what, what can I say? All right, listen, we'll leave it there. The debate, the debate will rage. We will talk about it again. Come back and see us again soon. After the debate, we can do all the post-match analysis and we can even talk about J.D. Vance and Tim Watts, who we didn't manage to get onto today. But thank you both, Joel, Jennifer... And thank you to all of my guests for joining me today. This was Nevermind the Ballots. We are now back every week. Remember, subscribe to us, youtube.com slash at some politics, and you won't miss a thing.